Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, Mosai and Christ bless you. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Gideon, and to my right, Officer Kamala TV. So, today's class is about uh, the heathens. The title is called Woe to the Heathens. Woe to the Heathens. So, let's jump right into it. Give me Jeremiah 1 and 5. The book of Jeremiah 1 and 5. Because the heathens think they got this thing locked down, but woe unto them. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou cameth forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. So what the scripture want to make very clear, the prophet of the Lord God were ordained, were born to be prophets. Ain't nothing you can do against the prophet of the Most High God. The job that we were born to do, we're going to do it, whether you like it or don't like it, period. Jump to verse 10. Verse 10. See, I have this day sent thee over the nations. No, under the nations. I have set thee this day over the nations. The Most High has set us over the nations. So we are the rulers of this earth. We're just not in our kingdom yet, but we have a job to do right now. We are the prophets and we are set over the nations for a purpose. Let's see what the purpose is. Read. And over the kingdoms to root out. To do what? To root out. To root out. Read. And to pull down. Uh-huh. And to destroy. And to throw down. To build and to plant. So... Don't get cornered. We're not talking about root out in terms of blowing up things. No, 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 not at all. Those wicked philosophies that the heathens are pushing them on, um, on our peoples, our job is to root, it, root them out because they have taken deep root into our society. They have taken deep root into our people. Your Christmases, your eating pork, your shrimps, your lobsters, your homosexualities, your churches, they have taken deep roots into the people. So it's our job as prophets ordained by the Most High God, we are set over the nation to correct them. With the scriptures. Give me Jeremiah 28 and 8. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. So the prophets that have been before us of old, they had a job to do. And what was the job? They prophesied against many countries. Read. And against great kingdoms. Against great kingdom. We prophesied against Egypt, prophesied against Babylon, prophesied against Persia, and uh, Medo Persia, prophesied against Greece, prophesied against Babylon, prophesied against Rome. And today we are prophesying against modern day Babylon because we are those same prophets coming back. Read it from the top. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war. And of evil and of pestilence. Of war, evil, and pestilence. That's what our forefathers did. They told Egypt you were going to get destroyed if you don't let the people go. Same thing to the Greeks. Our forefathers of Maccabees stood up for us and fought. You follow? And today, what you think? It's the same prophets are back. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to prophesize of war. World War Three is coming. Woe unto you, heathens. World War Three is coming. Pestilence is coming. Destruction is coming at your door. Why? Because you have done so much evil and most I put his words in our mouth so we can go and prophesy against you so that way our people may wake up and be saved when you are destroyed. Follow? Give me um, Jeremiah 22 verse 13. 
Because these nations actually think they're going to rob God's people, steal the whole earth, doing all these abominable things, and expect this thing to go on forever. No, my friend. You're wrong. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. Woe, destruction unto those who build their house by unrighteousness. Was this world built up on unrighteousness? Was America built on unrighteousness? Was France built on unrighteousness? Belgium with King Leopold III. Napoleon from France. Was this, were these countries built on unrighteousness? Until today are they standing on unrighteousness? Because you look at friends, friends cannot survive without Africa, but yet the African countries are poor. Mm. You follow? America cannot survive without the black community, but yet the blacks are poor. These countries were built on unrighteousness. So the Bible says for us to prophesy against those things and say, Woe unto them, unto uh, him that built it his house by unrighteousness. Read. And his chambers by wrong. That uses his neighbor's service without wages. Then we slave for over 400 years without wages. Then we built this country on our bare back. The only reward we got was whoop. I mean, was whips on our back, insults in our in our wounds. So you tell me this nation was not built on wrong. It was not built on unrighteousness. Yes, it was. So the scriptures say, "Whoa!" Because you never, ever, ever gave the people their wages. Did the people in America, um, um, how you say? were offered well, a promise, 40 acres and a mule. That's right. Not even that was given. So this whole place was built on wrong. Read. That useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. Where is the payment for the slave labor of America? It's nowhere to be found. Anytime you mention reparation, what does the political system say? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry about it so long ago. Forget about it. You know what I'm saying? We give you jobs now. Okay, you give us jobs now. Why you were able to do that? Because all the billions you made off of our back. But there's a God. And the scriptures say, woe unto you. Give me Jeremiah 50, verse 7. We have to follow the footsteps of our forefathers and prophesy against this nation because they have made war against God's people and they must pay. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 7. All that found them have devoured them. And their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. He said, All that found them have devoured them. The Arab devoured us. The Asians devoured us. The white men devoured us. We've been in captivity throughout the whole earth, and they have always devoured us. Nobody, nobody ever stood up for us. So... And they say what? And their adversary said, we offend not. They, they say, oh, we're not offending. Why? Because they know we broke God's laws. So it's like, well, they broke God's laws, so that means we're not offending. No, you are offending. And the scriptures say, woe unto you. It would behoove you to let us go, but guess what? Most I harden your heart. That's not going to happen. Your destruction must come, and we must prophesy about that. Read. Because they have sinned against the Lord. That's why they think they're not offending. Yes, we, 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 we are offended against our God. But your, 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 your devouring went too far. Like the dude say in, in, in belly. Yeah, you gone too far, Max. Mm. You gone too far. Like, there's a limit. There's a level you're not supposed to go. And they went beyond it. So Mosiah is real pissed at them right now. When he wake up in his anger, it's not going to be a pretty day. Read. The habitation... Of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. So, destroy you destroying us? Why? Because we disobey God's laws, right? Give me Habakkuk two twelve. And you think you're not offending? No, you are. And there's a God; He sees all. Habakkuk two and twelve. The book of Habakkuk, verse two, chapter two, verse twelve. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. There you go again. The scripture tells you, woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. Was not Oklahoma built on blood? The Trail of Tears blood? Hmm. Was not America built on blood? Was not the West established on blood? Of all the natives they killed? Right. And they brought us, the blacks, here to do what? Slay us even more. To the passage from Africa to here, how many millions of us died? 
How many babies died in Florida uh, um, uh, what, that was fed to the gators to try to get, uh, uh, kill alligators to make shoes? How many of our people was lynched over a lie made by a so-called white woman? These towns were built on blood. So the scriptures say, Woe unto him that built it, his town with blood. Read. And establish a city by iniquity. Establish his city by iniquity. By iniquity. That means oh, the whole city was established by sin. When you look at when they were building the railroads, all those saloons on the west, all those brothels, this whole place is sin, period. And you look at modern day, they're free mischief by law. Homosexuality is, is prevalent. Is that the white word? So, yes. guess what? The city is built on blood and built on iniquity. Mosai is not happy and is going to destroy just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Give me Zechariah 11 verse 5. That's why the name of the class is woe to the heathens because the heathens actually think they got everything locked down. We're not sinning. We're not doing nothing wrong. Oh, really? You missed the innocent, right? My goodness. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. That's what they do. They slay us. They slay our children and say, we offend not. They hold themselves not guilty. Read. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. It's like the Lord must be working with me because I'm rich. I'm doing everything evil, but yet I'm rich. So the most I agrees with me. But the scripture says, Woe unto you that built your nation by um your town with blood and your, your, your cities with iniquity. So give me Revelation 13 and 10. Because if you think you're going to get away with it, you are so wrong. Dead wrong. The book of Revelations, chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You hear that, Mr. Heathen? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Future tense. Right now, enjoy yourself. Our job right now is to prophesy to let you know what's coming your way and what's coming towards our people. So our people can wake up, know that they are Israel and repent. And when they repent, 144,000 is sealed, then it's a wrap. In one hour, you're done. Read that again from the top. Yes, sir. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. If you, you led us in captivity, all nations who have led us into captivity will go into captivity. Read. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. You who have killed us with the sword will be killed by the swords as well. Read. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the patience of the, and the faith of the saints. That's what the saints are waiting for. Give me Exodus uh, 21 and 16. Because what you don't understand is there's laws about what you did. But you don't care about these laws. So you, we got to read the law so you can understand why you're going to be punished. Because as judges, we must judge righteous judgment. Exodus 21 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 16. He that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. You stole us. The scripture says if you steal a man, right? If, you are, if that man is found in your hand, you got to be put to death. Are we not still in your hand, Mr. Heathen? We are still in your hand. So woe unto you. When Christ return and find us in your hand, guess what's going to happen? You're going to die. Simple as that. Give me Lamentation 2, uh, 16. Because you think you can go about doing all the atrocity that you're doing throughout all the world. And then your life is going to continue forever. You think you're going to move into space even. When you finish with this earth. Burning everything. Destroying everything. No, my friend. You're going to pay for it right here on this earth when Christ returns. Read. Right. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 16. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we look for. We have found, we have seen it. So right now they're rejoicing because we have been swallowed up. So they think they got it made. They got it on lockdown. But no, Revelation tells you, kill by the sword, 
die by the sword. You gonna pay for the things that you do. Today you enjoying yourself thinking, oh yeah, that's the day I've been looking for. Now my friend, okay? We broke God's laws. Therefore, we went into captivity. But God has something in store for you. You follow? Uh, give me, um, uh, give me, um, Isaiah 5.13. Isaiah 5.13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. So we went into captivity. Hell, you are hell. You open your mouth and swallowed us up. But guess what? You won't be able to digest us. We're too hard. You need a be uh, uh, stronger belly than a hyena. You cannot swallow our bones. So our bones are going to rise up again in the valley of the dry bones. Right. We're going to stand up again. And as we stand up right now, like we did in Chicago, fear fell upon your eyes. You are scared. Because why? You see the spirit of the Most High God is upon us. Let's end it with Revelation again. 13 and uh, 10. The book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So you led us into captivity, you're going to go into captivity. Read. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So you killed us with the sword, you will be killed with the sword. Read. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The saints, the true saints of the Most High God, which are the Israelites, the 12 tribe, you black, Hispanics, and Native American, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the sky to crack open, for the chariots to pop up, what we call IFOs, not UFOs, for the angels to beam us up, to go to the wilderness, purge the rebels among us, and come back and hunt you in the clefts, in the valleys, and in the caves. So woe unto you, heathens. Shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.